It's quiet. Too quiet. We're flipping the calendar to September and there's no sign of life in the Atlantic. Not only are there no hurricanes or tropical storms, but it's been nearly two months since the last named storm to roam the basin. We're heading into peak season and the oceans are primed, but will anything fire? We'll break it all down only on my radar. Hi gang, I'm my radar meteorologist Matthew Capucci. Hurricane season came in like a lamb and is still a lamb, but will it tap into its inner lion? We haven't had a name storm in the Atlantic since Colin on July 3rd. As it was, that was barely a lopsided pipsqueak of a storm that delivered mostly sunny skies and wind gusts to 25 miles per hour along the Carolina coastline. In other words, a typical Sunday. Since then, the oceans have been dormant. On August 22nd, Philip Klotzbach, a hurricane researcher at Colorado State University, tweeted that it was the first time since 1982 there hasn't been a single name storm between July 3rd and August 22nd. It's happened five other times since 1950, so it's a roughly once in 10 year event. As it stands, each of the past six seasons since 2016 has been above average or hyperactive. Now going back to 1982, how did that season shape up? Well, it was a dud. Only six name storms ever formed and the United States never experienced a hurricane landfall. It tied with 2013 as having the fewest named storms in the satellite era, with reliable weather satellites first coming to prominence in the 1970s. Meanwhile, we'll also probably see August come to a close without a single named storm. That's pretty darn rare. It hasn't happened since 1997. For comparison, I was born in August of 1997 and I just turned 25. That season wound up being pretty easy for us, with only Danny making landfall in Alabama as a low-end Category 1 hurricane. Otherwise, most of the low to mid-end storms remain harmlessly out at sea. Before that, you'd have to go back to 1961, 1941, or 1929 to get a season with no August storms. As for how those seasons turned out, it was sort of a mixed bag. Later in 1929, a Category 3 did hit the Florida Keys and blasted Key Largo with a 150 mile per hour wind gust. In 1941, things didn't get cooking until September 11th, and even then, only six storms ended up forming. That said, some of them were strong, like the Category 3 that struck Houston with 125 mile per hour winds on September 23rd. There was also a Category 2 that year in October that slammed Florida. So two empty Augusts gave two pretty quiet seasons for the most part. Then we look at 1961, when things just went gangbusters. After a somnol in August, September and October produced three Category 4s and a pair of Category 5s. Carla was one of them, but it made landfall as a Category 3 near Port O'Connor, Texas on September 11th. It produced destructive winds, a deluge of rain, but also unleashed an F4 tornado in Galveston that claimed eight lives. So all told, we simply don't know what the rest of this season will bring. As it stands now, we're only at about 10% of where we should be in terms of ACE, or accumulated cyclone energy. ACE is a measure of how much energy storms expend on their winds. We're at about 2.8 right now, and we should be closer to 30 ACE units. So why has this season been so slow? Well, we can look at a couple different factors and do some sleuthing. Usually when one basin is busy, the other is quiet. The Pacific has been way more busy than the Atlantic and has already seen 10 storms, including seven hurricanes. But the Pacific probably isn't to blame. The Eastern Pacific is only running 13% ahead of normal. And in terms of balance, that wouldn't explain a 90% deficit in the Atlantic's activity. Usually having a lot of rising air and storms in one basin can result in subsidence or sinking air in the other basin, but that's just not the limiting factor this time around. So now let's take a look at water temperatures. Well, they're plenty warm. You can see positive temperature anomalies all across the basin. There's plenty to fuel some nasty storms. La Nina, meanwhile, is really going strong. La Nina favors a busier Atlantic season. It's characterized by cooler waters in the eastern tropical Pacific, which helps induce sinking motion in the air over there. That in turn results in more rising air over the Atlantic, which in theory can make more storms and make it easier for storms to form. Evidently, that's not the issue either. So let's consider wind shear, or a change of wind speed and or direction with height. Too much shear and you play tug of war and just tear apart a fledgling storm. Shear has been pretty close to average, maybe a little bit above average, but not by much. And yet hurricane season is way below average. That's why it must be something else. It turns out the Atlantic is just too darn stable right now, meaning the atmosphere is just not really primed to permitting pockets of air to rise and form the clumpings of downpours and thunderstorms you need to get that tropical development. 
Here you can see what that looks like. This chart might be a little bit exaggerated in terms of the deficit, but you can see we're well below average in terms of activity. That's probably due to hot, dry conditions from the Sahara wafting overhead, capping off the lower atmosphere and preventing parcels of air from rising. We can take a look at the past few weeks and see just how anomalously dry the mid-levels over the Central Atlantic have been, like 10 to 15 percent extra dry. That's why the tropics are basically asleep. In the meantime, though, there are some models, like the European model, hinting at a statistically significant uptick in hurricane activity as we head deeper into September, so don't let your guard down yet. Also remember, it doesn't matter if it's above average or below average season or whatever. All that matters is one storm because that's all it takes. So keep it tuned to my radar on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and right here in the MyRadar app. We'll keep you updated every step of the way. In the nation's capital, I'm my radar meteorologist Matthew Capucci. Follow my radar on social media. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download my radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.